So what we're looking at in this, this talk is it was a study of the MIT digital currency experiment. Though in some sense, though we looked at Bitcoin, it wasn't really about Bitcoin, it was a more general story about technology. And then what we were looking at is what happens if you perturb the natural order of adoption? Or classic technology question, can you speed up adoption? And what we find is that attempts to do that can backfire if in doing so you lead natural early adopters to not feel unique anymore. In that what we found is that if we took someone who naturally be the first to adopt a technology and we didn't allow them to adopt first, they tend to abandon the technology. In other words, you need a slow ramp up when you're spreading a technology just in order that the people who naturally early adopt technologies, the technology experts, can feel unique. So, and this relates to our study that we presented today. Uh, there's something I think quite interesting that's happening in the digital economy uh, right now. Uh, you may have heard of blockchain technology, which is kind of related to Bitcoin, but it, it has evolved beyond that. Um, the way I think this technology is actually quite interesting and in how we think about what digitization can really bring to the table is in terms of uh, what we call costless verification. Uh, whenever we engage in a transaction in the economy, whether you buy a coffee or you, you buy something online or you authenticate yourself in a system, you're essentially creating a transaction. And that transaction usually carries some, some interesting attributes. Who's involved? Uh, when did it happen? Uh, what's the amount? And, and other information like that. Uh, what blockchain can really do is lower the cost of verifying those transactions so that you don't need a costly audit anymore, but you can rely essentially on software. Um, I think this is particularly powerful because a lot of the business models we see out there rely on intermediaries to perform that verification. Um, so this challenges some of those intermediaries, not so much in what they do every day, but in how they add value to those transactions. Uh, another interesting aspect of this is that the way we solve this disclosure problem, where we essentially leak our private information all the time, is by providing our information at every step to ensure that those transactions go smoothly through the economy. And blockchain can kind of really redefine how much we have to tell about ourselves uh, when we engage uh, in a marketplace. I'm really glad that Christian brought up privacy because for me, the flip side of verification and digital verification is really questions about how it affects consumers' privacy and also how it affects firms' relationships with consumer data and the ability to keep their customers' data private. And one thing that we are exploring in another study is I think a tension that we're seeing in the digital transformation of the economy. That before when we always felt thought about surveillance, the canonical cases are worried about the government being able to track our transactions. And now there's a tension that we're seeing various shall we say commercial providers, of which well, blockchain is one example, in some sense providing escape from government surveillance, but you're trading that off for in some sense computer buys verification, which perhaps in some sense also implies more easy commercial tracking of your personal data. Thank you.